The secret word tonight is foot. F-O-O-T. Really? You bet your life. Belgium American, creators of America's most beautiful compact, smartest cigarette cases, finest dresser sets, present Groucho Marx in the Elgin American show, You'll Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here's that sterling Elgin American, the one, the only... Is that guy still around? Oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fanneman has placed a try for it. We invited some movie fan club presidents and some movie fan mail clerks to the show. And just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Verlee Gross from Universal Pictures and Miss Barbara Ring, president of the Dana Andrews fan club. And here they are, ladies, mate, Groucho Marx. Welcome for Elgin American Compact, girls. And if either of you say the secret word at any time we're talking, you each win a 16-millimeter Apollo Sound movie projector. It's a common word, something you always have with you. A studio mail clerk and a fan club president, me. Eh? Barbara Ring, uh, what fan club are you president of? The Dana Andrews fan club. How many members do you have? 900 nationalists. Verley Gross, uh, you're the girl from the studio yes, fan mail department. Huh? So about how many letters does your studio average uh, a day? Well, I would say around 3,000. Mm-hmm. Who gets the most mail? Well, we've gone to Carlo, who's appearing in crisscross here. Why, why is that? Well, I think she has a certain exotic peel, appeal for men, and... Peel, uh, I think, would be closer. <laughs> <laughs> so why do most people write fan letters? Well, the majority, of, well, I would say about 90% of the mail we receive is asking for free pictures. Mm-hmm. And do you send out free pictures? Oh, yes. How much do you charge for free pictures? <laughs> Ten cents per dollar. Ten cents. <laughs> well, that's pretty cheap for a free picture. <laughs> Uh, what what other mail do you get besides the ones asking for pictures? Oh, we get proposals for marriage to the women stars and to some of the men stars, too. And uh, then we get cra- letters from crackpots. Probably the best example would be the fellow who wrote in and wanted the gum that Dick Powell had chewed in a picture. <laughs> Probably a beach nut. Eh? <laughs> What's the oddest letter you ever got from a movie fan? Well, I think probably the woman who had seen the life of Riley, and she You're asked, coming out now, huh? Mm-hmm. And she asked for t- uh, she asked us for William Bendix if we would send him, and she sent ten dollars to cover the charges. And he wouldn't go. <laughs> no, he, he told us to send back the ten dollars and send a big picture that he autographed to her personally. And then we had the the young chap who wrote in and uh, asked for one of our stars, shall we say, unmentionable. He said that he was no. having a... Let's not say unmentionable, huh? <laughs> Lingerie? Well, yes. And he said he was collecting them. It was his hobby. He had well, was he collecting them filled or empty? <laughs> We have the perfect gift for each of you, for Verley and for Barbara. Elgin American, stunning red compact, trimmed in bright jewelers bronze. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Thank you so much. Barbara, let's get back to your fan club. Why did you pick Dana Andrews? Why didn't you join the Groucho Marx fan club? <laughs> oh, I didn't know there was one. <laughs> I'm not sure there's a Groucho Marx. <laughs> As president of the Dana Andrews fan club, just what do you do? Well, the girls like to meet their president, and I just preside over the meetings and pound the gavel. And then what do you do? You just sit there and pound the gavel? <laughs> that may sound like a meeting of woodpeckers, doesn't it? <laughs> well, how much do you know about uh, Mr. Andrews? Well, he was the third son of a minister. And his hobby is boating, and he never lets his children, he has four children, he never lets his children go on the boats because he's afraid they'll fall off. He and his wife go out boating. Uh-huh. How do you get all this information? Oh, I read all articles that are written on him. Why do you go to all this trouble? Are you, are you actually, here's a man, a father with four children, huh? Are you trying to horn in on a territory? It's, it's my hobby. 
Maybe. How do you think his wife feels about this, huh? She maybe knows. I don't know. He's out there with his wife in that rowboat. Does he always take his wife? No. Uh, have, you, have you ever met him personally? Oh, yes. He's been introduced to me before, so I think he remembered me. I wasn't sure, though. So I just introduced myself, yeah. and he said, oh, you're the president of my fan club. And Did you have the mallet with you? <laughs> does, does, does his wife belong to the club, too? Oh, yes. Yeah, she's an honorary member. I see. No, that's very nice. <laughs> Do any of your members collect items that your hero has touched? Well, we had one girl that, uh, she went up and asked the star, Dana Andrews, if she could have a few pieces of hair out of his head. And he, he complied. She didn't want the whole head. No. Huh? <laughs> she would have liked to have it, but she Just couldn't. some locks, huh? <laughs> she could have got that at the delicatessen. <laughs> And she got it. He let her take some hair off of his head. And it, no, she just took hold of it and pulled it out. Well, it's such a nice way of spending the morning, huh? <laughs> There's another girl that collects uh, old cigarette butts that he's thrown away. What does she do? Follow him around with a garbage can? <laughs> well, this about... doesn't seem like a very romantic relationship that you have. Huh? Collecting old cigarette butts and pulling his hair out doesn't... I wouldn't consider a very fancy romance. Well, you make a very interesting scene. Now, let's see how well you can work together for $2,000. In just one minute, you're going to play the Elgin American game you bet your life. First, George Fenneman is going to offer some invaluable advice. Go ahead, George. Have you looked at your compact lately? One look now can save your reputation in accessories. If that look shows you a compact that has seen its best days, Remember, your compact is the one accessory you use most that other people see you use. And it either adds to or subtracts from the smart impression you want to make. Compacts are such important fashion accessories today that every woman needs three. One each in the correct mood for her daytime, sports, and evening clothes. Only Elgin American offers such a thrilling variety of designs, shapes, and sizes for every apparel need. And in such a wide price range, that every woman can have an Elgin American compact to reflect her good taste in glowing terms. Look at your compact tonight. And tomorrow, get the compact fashion preferred. America's number one compact. An exquisite Elgin American. <laughs> Let's see if you two will get a chance. It's a $2,000 question. You're going to play your bet your life. Fenneman, tell them the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they won't know what goes on until it's their turn. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. What question category did you select? Comic strip characters. Comic strip characters. How much of your $20 will you bet on the first one? Ten. Okay. Mac and Mr. Simpkins are characters in what comic strip? Tilly the Toiler. Tilly the Toiler is correct. Well, we're off to a great start. They have $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. How much of the 30 are you going to bet this time? 20 All right. In what strip do you find the little Indian lonesome polecat? Little Abner. Little Abner is correct. They now have $50. Here's your third question. How much of the 50 are you going to go for? 40 40 Forty. Doesn't get along fine. In what comic strip is Hot Shot Charlie? Hot shot, Charlie. Take a stab. Any answers better than none? No. I'm sorry. It's Terry and the Pirates. Oh. They now have $10. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 10 are you going to bet? 10. 10. All right. Alexander and Cookie are children in what comic strip? Blondie and Daddy. Blondie is correct. And they wind up with $20. and good luck from Elgin American Compact. Don't go away now. You're still in the running for the big question. And perhaps the next couple will say the secret word, Groucho. It's foot. F-O-O-T. They've been in a waiting room off stage. Okay, boys, bring them in. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected an airline hostess and a traveling salesman. And here they are, Miss Mary Bullock and Mr. Joe Bud Mead, Groucho Mark. Welcome for Elgin American Compact, folks. If you know about the secret word, here's a clue. It's a common word, something you have always with you. You might say it at any time we're talking. An airline hostess and a traveling salesman, eh? Miss Bullock, uh, what's your line? 
CWA. And salesman Joe Budd? Yes, sir. Where are you from, Mr. Budd? Georgia. What do you sell, Mr. Budd? Ophthalmological instruments and supplies. Mm -hmm. Would you mind clarifying that? <laughs> Ophthalmological instruments are instruments which are used in refracting or examining the eyes and determining the proper vision and vision of the patient. I don't let's overdo it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Budd, uh, are you married? Yes, sir. How'd you meet your wife? Was she a farmer's daughter? <laughs> no, she wasn't a farmer's daughter, but, uh, but her father was. Her father. father was a farmer? <laughs> Well, that's quite a trick if you can do it, huh? Your father-in-law married a farmer's daughter, huh? Your father-in-law married a farmer's daughter. Well, now you've got me confused, huh? <laughs> uh, stewardess, uh, Mary Bullock, huh? That's correct. Uh, are you related to the uh, department store downtown? I haven't been able to trace it yet. Well, <laughs> well try it. They're loaded, huh? <laughs> Tell me, an attractive girl like you, why, why aren't you married? Do your male passengers consider you too flighty? <laughs> <laughs> well, would you like to get married someday and settle down to us? Yes, I do. And I'm afraid I'm getting a little bit choosy now. I find one person with nice quality I like and another one with nice quality, but I can't find them all in the same man. <laughs> well, you'll find out after you're married to one of them that none of them have all those qualities. <laughs> Could I make a reservation with you for tomorrow night? Sorry, I have a flight. You can leave your plane at home, you know. Uh, you fly tomorrow night? Oh, with a fly-by-night outfit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you load, do you load the passengers on your trip? Yes, I do. Uh, do they ever come unloaded without you? And... <laughs> Do we unload them? Do any of the passengers ever try to uh, make a, a date with you? Yes, they do. And they what do you do? Sure. Go fly a kite, you tell them? <laughs> I don't think they trust me when I get on a plane. The first thing the hostess does is always strap me in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we pry into any more secrets, I have a handsome cigarette case for our traveling salesman. And for our airline hostess, a smart, round, compact, both in two tones of jewelers' bronze. And here they are by Elgin American. Oh, it's lovely. I have an outfit that will match exactly. I think any outfit you wear would match. <laughs> With that compact, you'll always be able to powder your nose at 20,000 feet, Miss Willard. That is, if you can reach your nose at 20,000 feet. <laughs> I'll try and let you know. <laughs> Miss Bullock, uh, what qualifications do you need in order to become an airline hostess? Well, the age is uh, from 21 to 27 years of age, and mm. uh, height from 5 foot 2 to 5 foot 7. Miss Bullock, you said it, you said foot, and that's the secret word, so you each win an Apollo 16 millimeter sound movie projector. And not only that, but you can also walk out of here tonight with over $2,000. Now, let's settle down to business. <laughs> now, Mr. Budd, as a traveling salesman, do you, do you ever fly? Oh, all the time. You fly all the time? Yes, sir. Could you fly around the studio? <laughs> 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 Do you have a pretty good stock of jokes to keep your customers in a good mood? Well, we use a fair few around. Could you give us a sample, Weeze, just so we can get an idea? <laughs> I mean, let's be well, walking in the, in the store now. Well, have you heard this one? Uh, did well, you, you, you don't, don't start about... off. You don't just open the door and say, have you heard this one? <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> Stop the evening for you, Dr. Marks. Have you heard the one about the uh, mate who rushed up to the captain of the ship? Uh, the captain, uh, captain, the crew is revolting. Captain said, my, my, they certainly are. Well, I guess business is lousy all over. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gabby, uh, uh, let's see how good it is. <laughs> Let's see how good a salesman you are. Pretend I'm a customer and you're selling bad stuff. Now, uh... 
You knock That's on my door and start selling me a bath. I'm the right. housewife. Uh, I'll knock on the door first. Okay, knock on the door. Be sure you do, because I may be dressing. <laughs> and the door open? The door open, yes. Yeah. Open Sesame, eh? Huh? Good morning, We Mr. had a small dog named Sesame that opened the door. <laughs> okay, I'm now standing arms akimbo. Good morning, Mrs. Mandangle. I would like to interest you in... What is my name? <laughs> In your hypothetical case, uh, Mrs. Fandangle. Mrs. Fandangle. Huh? <laughs> I'm citing an improvement over the one I've got. <laughs> May I take a moment of your time to interest you in you the world's latest made, development yes. in the way of a bat? I see. Do you have it with you? I have one out in the car. I can very quickly bring it in and install it and give you the, the, the full advantage. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you about it. I'm not giving a few. You can solicit a few of these while this is the fur line bath tub. For fur line bath? <laughs> which, al- which also has a new patented feature. You, you're acquainted with the... Uh, pleasures that you get in the bubble bath, and you have the bubbles all flowing up and above, and occasionally they overflow and go over the side onto the floor. Right. However, we have a, a new patented feature. It's an air intake valve that surrounds the upper edge of the tub, so that as the bubbles come up, right, as they go right into that line of the plane. And this tub, by the way... Well, I'll, I'll take a half a dozen of those and a cheesecake. <laughs> You're a pretty good salesman. I'll take two of those tubs because I may want to take more than one bath. <laughs> and that, that fur line uh, tub really intrigues me. I may have the Dana Andrews Club come up and pluck the hair out of that. <laughs> <laughs> and now then, you're going to play, you bet your life, the Elgin American game. If you run your $20 into more than our other couples, you get a chance at the $2,000 question later. Fenneman, remind our listeners how much the first couple won. The fan club president and her partner won $20. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. What question category did you select? Famous horse racing tracks. Famous horse racing tracks. All right, here's your first question. And how much are you going to bet? $10. $10. All right, and what state do you find Belmont Park? Belmont Park? Belmont, that's what I said. (laughs) New York. New York is first. They're also a good start. They have $30. You now shot up to $30. How much of this swag are you going to bet on this one? Let's try 25. 25. She's a high flyer. <laughs> in, in what state? In what state is Hialeah, huh? Miami. Miami, Miami. Florida. <laughs> they now have $55. You have zoomed up to 55 smackers, and here's your third question. How much of this 55 are you going to risk? Uh, you think it's Sure. You're going to bet 50 bucks in what state is Arlington Park? Arlington Park, Illinois. Illinois is correct. <laughs> $105. All right, you're coming around the rail now. Is your last chance to beat the other couple? Right. <laughs> Bananas on the rail. Uh, how much you going to bet on this one? You've got $105. How much are you going to let go? So we bet the C-note. <laughs> $100? A C-note, I presume you mean 100 smackers, huh? In what state is Monmouth Park? Monmouth Park? New Jersey. New Jersey is correct. And you wind up with $205. Thanks and good luck from Elgin American Compact. Now, in just one minute, our last couple will play you bet your life, and then we know who gets the crack at the $2,000 question. Fenneman, what's on your mind? Every man and woman will agree that it's much smarter to carry matching accessories. And every man and woman can have that smartness with Elgin American cigarette case and lighter set. They contribute handsomely to a man's well-dressed feeling. They lend glamour to a woman's smoking. Every lighter is precision-made. And for women, many an Elgin American compact can be matched to its own cigarette case, lighter, or to both. See how pleasantly all these sets are priced. How proud you'll look and feel with a stunning cigarette case and lighter to match by Elgin American. Well, soon knows going to earn the most money tonight and get the chance at the $2,000 question. George, who's leading so far? Well, the traveling salesman and the airline hostess are leading with $205. And here's our final couple, Groucho. They've been in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know the secret word is foot. F-O-O-T. Okay, boys, bring them in. Just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Miss Dorothy Bates, the manicurist, 
and Mr. Mac Wise, a blacksmith. And here they come. Fuzz, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to the Elgin American program. And if either of you say the secret word at any time we're talking, you each win a 16-millimeter Apollo sound movie projector. It's a common word, something you will always have with you. A blacksmith and a manicure, see? Where'd you do your manicuring, uh, Dorothy? Beverly Hills Hotel. Are you, are you married? Uh... Yes, I am. Yes. Yeah. Don't be so defiant about it. <laughs> How did you meet your husband, Dorothy? I met my husband at the Bay Blade Roll Skating in New York City. He was skating? Uh-huh. And you were skating? Mm-hmm. And uh, do you remember what music was playing at the time? No, I don't. And you'll never get a chance to say, they're playing our song. <laughs> <laughs> Blacksmith, Mac Wise is your name? Weiss, Weiss, uh, Weiss. Where are you from, uh, Mr. Weiss? Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Uh-huh. Guthrie, Oklahoma. Guthrie, huh? Eh? Are there many blacksmiths around these days? Well, automobiles kind of got them on the run, but there's two classes of blacksmiths. Uh, one is working iron, but I'm a horseshoe. You're a horseshoe. You shoe horses, huh? Eh? Uh-huh. You ever shoe flies? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I let the horse do that. You let the horse shoe the flies, huh? Well, that's a likely tale, huh? <laughs> Now, where's your shop, Mac? Is it under the spreading chestnut tree? No, the modern blacksmiths got it on a mobile truck, and we just go around... Mobile and... truck? You said you were from Oklahoma. That's right. <laughs> Oklahoma mobile. Oh. Well, how do you shoe a horse, Mac? Well, the first thing I do is bend over. Yeah? Put the... Is that safe? Huh? <laughs> you, you make quite a target in that position, Mac. <laughs> Have any of your clients ever kicked about the way you uh, fix them? It's pretty hard, too. Suppose a horse doesn't want to have new shoes. How do you sell them on the idea, huh? Well, that's where the blacksmith has to be a little lover, too. The first you, thing you talk to him? You just walk up and pet him and say, no, Whoa, honey, just stand up here, man. <laughs> 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 Easy, baby. <laughs> well, since we've got a manicure here, I better show my hand. For our blacksmith, we have Elgin American Silver Finish Cigarette Case. And for Miss Dorothy, the Silver Finish Compact by Elgin American. Here you are, Dorothy. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now, Dorothy, what is the average size step a man leaves after he's held hands for a half an hour? Seventy-five cents. Seventy-five? Mm-hmm. Gee, I only give a dime. <laughs> <laughs> well, who gives the largest steps, uh, old men or young men? Usually old men. Why is that, sir? Well, they usually have more money to spend than the younger fellow. You and? feel this is probably their last contact with life. <laughs> Do you have any uh, any special methods that you use to wangle a big tip out of a customer? Well, you treat them as professionals. So. Call them whole baby and whole baby. <laughs> <laughs> you say stand still, honey. We give them a nice massage and. Uh... You give them a massage too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they get seventy five cents. <laughs> Where did you say you were located, Daddy? <laughs> my hands over in the morning, huh? <laughs> You ever get tired, Dorothy, sitting there all day holding a man's hand and looking him in the face? No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Max, uh, do you ever get tired uh, looking... Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you make, a, you make a very interesting couple, although I'm not exactly sure which one of you I should go to for a manicure. Huh? <laughs> now, let's see how you can work together for $2,000. You're the last couple to play the Elgin American game. You beat the other two couples, and you get the $2,000 question. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The traveling salesman and the airline hostess are high with $205. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. What question category did you select? Um, Song to that ask questions. Question. Now, here's your first question. you got $20. How much are you going to bet at this point? And $10. Give me the title of the song. Okay, Stan. How are things in How are things in Glockamora? <laughs> and things are up to a great start. They have $30. <laughs> Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight now. How much of your $30 are you going to bet on this one? Twenty. Mm. All right, here it is. <laughs> Did you ever see a dream walking? Is right. They're on their way. They have $50. Here's your third question. You've got $50. How much are you going to bet? $20. $20? All right. 
What's the name of this song? Play, Stan. Deep in the ocean. Deep in the ocean. We now have $70. Now you've got $70. Here's your last chance to beat the other couple. How much of the 70 are you going to bet? 50. You're going to bet 50. All right. What is that all right, Max? What is the name of this song? And they wind up with $120. And that means the traveling salesman and the airline hostess of a winning couple and get a chance to win $2,000. Years of the finest designing, engraving, finishing, and craftsmanship have put Elgin American Compact cigarette cases and lighters in a class by themselves. Beautiful and durable to use yourself, memorable as gifts for any occasion. See these exquisite accessories in rich colors, silver finish, jeweler's bronze, and sterling silver at any leading jewelry store, department store, or specialty shop. And you can put your cigarette case, lighter, and compact confidence in Elgin American. And here's the winning couple, the traveling salesman and the airline hostess. Well, back again to try for $2,000 of Elgin American's money. Good luck. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you and talk it over thoroughly. And no help in the audience, please. Here it is for $2,000 in cash. The United States was a young, struggling country in 1778, and European nations refused to recognize it. What was the first European country to officially recognize the United States? What is the answer you two have decided upon? France. France? $2,000 from Elgin American Compact. You said you cleaned up tonight. Not only did you win the $2,000, but you each won a 16 millimeter sound movie projector. But $205, you earned the total of uh, $2,205. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. <laughs> Elgin American Show, You Bet Your Life, is a John Goodell production. Transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Blonde. Editor, Bernie Smith. Music by Stanley Meyer. Remember, next week's big question pays $1,000. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for You Bet Your Life. Starring Groucho Marx. Presented by the creators of America's most beautiful compact, smartest cigarette cases, and finest dresser sets, Elgin American. Good night, folks. Have you looked at your compact lately? <laughs>